Cruz and uh, this is James Comic the guy on the bike. We're gonna do another adventure in the Half Ash Productions. We're gonna run in here and look at a couple of shows. But we're gonna start out with a, with a view of this show by Larry Crone. Well, I uh, started out, it's a Friday night, and I was sort of uh, bopping around town and uh, popped in here, and uh, I was favorably impressed. I am, I'm a big fan of kind of shiny, eccentric, colorful art. And uh, so this caught my eye. This is titled, Then and Now, a cape collaboration with found and embroidered fabric sequins, beads, yarn, embroidered floss, approximately 58 by 35 by 11. <laughs> and he's got a price tag of uh, $125,000. For this, wow. It's titled "I'm Bad." Antique mirror, acrylic paint, and aluminum foil. I'm a big fan of uh, naive art, outsider art, and uh, I go to the outsider art fair every year. And one of the sections I love is the. Uh, Haitian flags, the, the beaded flags, and uh, a lot of this work by Larry has that same kind of quality, the sparkle. It's titled Then and Now, Peppy Carriage Eagle Flowers 2012. This is Sequins on found embroidered fabric, embroidered floss, 32 by 33 inches. And he's got a price of 25 grand on this one. I guess this would probably be. You better let somebody love you before it's too late. Oh. I guess in many ways this is almost like a uh, an installation. This is another uh, major beaded piece. This is then and now Indian Owl Clown Duck Chicken 2012. And uh, this not only has this uh, kind of the sparkle of the uh, Asian flags, but there's also a kind of uh, 1960s kitsch quality. Maybe some of these uh, little embroidery patterns that were found at a thrift shop someplace or a garage sale. A lot of these they just look like uh, hot pad holders, and uh, it's got a whole kind of a selection of mirror pieces. Like a mobile, mobile. <laughs> It's not only 1960s kitsch, it's bad 1960s kitsch. Gone, 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 gone. It's 
are all hot pads, like home ec projects. Kind of uh, pathetic Afghans. I wonder if he does the knitting on these. It's called Africa. So we've got our red, yellow, and green. It's actually love is in the air. That's great. So it's um, ink on printed paper, acid-free tape. 16 by 14 inches. I love you and I will always love you and I will always love you and I will always love you repeated over and over again. Then and now I love you. Then and now legally blonde. Oh, these are fun. These are his then and now hay bales. Numbers one through three. Yarn. Canvas, muslin, zipper, embroidery, floss, and stuffing. 18 by 15 by 36 inches. And uh, well, this has got kind of a uh, country you know, mobile home feel to it. I, I guess you could call this dairy farm Dada. Okay, well, so we caught up with Larry. So I, this is like your first show in a long time, is that what I heard? That's correct. <laughs> so where, where have you been keeping yourself? Uh, I've been in my studio. Busy know, sewing. One of the questions I had was um, some of these pieces have got a lot of sequins and uh, beads and stuff. Do you do all the sewing yourself or do you have this done in Jamaica or someplace <laughs> like that? Yeah, I send it all to China. Uh, no, no, I do it all. The, I mean, the, the basic background is, is things that I found. Yes. So the sequins I do all myself and, and, uh, and uh, you know, piece them together and so. So some of these pieces you're literally spending probably months there <laughs> sewing and and do you do all the knitting? I saw some of the some of the weird Afghan pieces or you don't no, do the knitting? Actually, there's a couple of pieces that they look like. Uh, like this is the one that's called Ben and Now Lichtenstein. And yes. It looks like a big uh, knitted blanket. That was crocheted, like long ropes of crocheted stuff that I then stitched together. And where do you find these? Out at flea markets or garage sales? Uh, or? They're stores mostly and sometimes donations. Donations? Well, like, I mean, from friends, people who like. Oh, their people are out there watching. Yeah, yeah that's fun. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm kind of sensing a. Uh, Kind of a rural aesthetic here. You, you want to talk a little bit about that? Uh, well, I'm from St. Louis, which is not a rural environment, right. but, uh, but a lot of the stuff is inspired by country music, and um, that's sort of where I started uh, making a lot of this work. Is using Are you a musician yourself? Yeah. What do you uh, play? I play the ukulele. Oh. I write songs and sing them, and um, you know, I play out as sort of a music thing separate from the um, one more question. I was thinking that a lot of this is almost more like an installation as opposed to just a show of maybe paintings or drawings or something. What's your feeling about installation work as, as it relates to what you're doing? Uh, it's important to me. You know, the installation is, is a whole process. I mean, I've done work that is installation as its own piece, but yes. when it comes to installing a show of individual pieces in the installation, it's you know, one of the most important. Yes, yeah, so and being emerged in the in the materials and the the whole thing does make a big difference. Anyway, thanks, Larry Crone. Thank you. Good luck on the show. We're enjoying it. Thank thanks. you. Well, now we're going to take a look at a show in the small back gallery. This is a series of Jesus drawings by Jim Torok. This cross is way too big. Uh, Jim is a longtime Williamsburg artist. 
He's got a couple of different things that he does. One of them is th this kind of uh, cartoony narrative works. So anyway, I'm just minding my own business when these guys with swords come up. And uh, he also does a uh, series of hyper-realistic portraits. Let me get this straight. Somehow this is paying for everyone else's sins. And they know I have nail issues, so this is all, all Jesus stuff. Jim Torok, talk to me for a little bit. This is what you're going for here, huh? Okay. Tell me a little bit about the Jesus drawings. These are my drawings. Yes. And, uh, I think they're are they self-portraits? Uh, no, they're not really self-portraits. But they're all about me, I guess. Yes. But what, so what like is that guy he has hair? He has a full beard. <laughs> well, you could have and a full do I beard look too. Like I have nails. Uh, stigmata? No. Not yet. So it's not me. What is it that you find so funny about the uh, the crucifixion? What is wow. the, the, the basis for that Ooh, humor? What a good question. Yeah. What's so funny about the crucifixion with the, what I, what it, the show says? Yeah. I guess it's what it is, is like I envision, like if I were on the cross being crucified, yeah. what would I be saying or thinking? Hey, look, I can see my house from up here. Exactly. Okay. Because, uh, you know, your mind went and you're the, in, in the midst of the worst Kim Jones scenario you can come up with, I can come up with funny things. I could be in a crisis yeah. and, and my mind will think. So in certain ways this is kind of like, this is kind of like taking the, the ultimate uh, dramatic tragedy and trying to find something funny, something light about it. And well, I just identify with Jesus. Because I was ra raised as a Catholic as a kid and I had a very strict okay. I'm so, sorry to hear that. I but hit on these, okay. yeah. Uh, it just sort of uh, tapped a vein that, that I was really rich for me, and it all just started coming out. So it's about being a kid, about being. How about kind of doing? Thing. How about doing the series like this? But they're all basically about the same size, and you just sort of kept the same theme, but just changed changed the punchlines. I mean, is that? Oh, um, well, that was a good thing about it because it's, <laughs> it, it was like simple. And uh, once I started doing them, they were. I, I was coming up with them really fast, and I just did a whole lot of them, and then it was sort of done. How long did so you work on the series? The format was important, because once I came up with the format, it was like the perfect format. Yeah. It was a way to get really uh, beautiful drawings to me, because I was, my mind was really just to go with this simple thing. How long did it take you to do the series, Jim? How long? Yeah. All together? Oh, I don't know, probably over several months. Just kept doing it over several months. Okay, look, I'll let you get back to your fans. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Jim Torok. And uh, yeah, we'll take a few more. I feel like a piece of meat. I'm sorry, but this is not about you. So this is James Com reporting on Larry Crone and Jim Torok, the Jesus drawings. Here at Pierogi on North 9th Street in Williamsburg. Thank you, Kate.